Hey guys and welcome to another episode on PCAP NG and this is a continuation in a multi-part series where we are talking about PCAP NG and how it's different from the original PCAP format. So with that, today we're going to be talking about part three, which is the EPB. And EPB, uh, just as a reminder, is the block which stores the, um, the packet data itself. So I'm not going to go over the history of PCAP NG. Uh, as I've already covered that in previous videos, you're welcome to go back and look at those videos. Uh, also, just a reminder, there are a couple of blocks that we have covered already, the SHB, the IDB, and today we're talking about the EPB. There's a couple more blocks to go through, but today's topic is enhanced packet block. And so the EPB is the most important part of the PCAP-NG um, blocks. And this block is essentially uh, the block that has this packet data right here. And it's the variable length padded to 32 bits um, section. Uh, but if you look at it, the differences from the previous generation, you look at the interface ID. And we have talked about in the previous video that the interfaces, um, the way the PCAP-NG works is that you can have multiple interfaces captured into a single um, PCAP-NG file. And so the interface ID is here. Uh, there's obviously a timestamp, and the timestamps um, high and low together are a 64 bit quantity in terms of a TS resolution, which is defined by the interface description block. Now, that's a little bit of a departure from the previous generation because um, previously we used to have 32 bits of seconds and then um, 32 bits of uh, you know, lower, res uh, higher resolution timestamp. But now it's just a 64-bit quantity defined in terms of interface TS resolution. So um, even though it looks like two values here, high and low, but they are really one timestamp here in PCAP-NG. So um, as usual, you see this block length is in the beginning and the end. That's a new structure that PCAP-NG follows. So if you parse the file forwards or backwards, you can quickly parse through and jump over the various blocks. So that's just a convenience factor um, in the PCAP-NG. Now, the, the nice thing is that besides all this usual stuff, it has these options fields. And the options are what makes um, PCAP-NG so much more powerful than the PCAP uh, format. In this, you can have flags, and the flags are setting on this packet, whether this is inbound or outbound packet, uh, reception, whether it was multicast, broadcast, promiscuous, FCS lengths, so it says that you know there are, there are multiple protocols like PPP where the length of FCS can change during the time uh, of capture. And so you can have all that data here. Um, obviously link dependent errors can also be captured here. And that is an addition and an enhancement to the PCAP format. So you can carry all this data in these flags here. You can also carry a hash. Now you'd say, why do I need a hash? If you're comparing two PCAPs, you can compare all the bytes or you can compare just the hash. So all you would have to do is find the packet's hash, compare it to the next PCAP, and then you have it. You can say whether the packet's the same or not. Um, that makes life a lot easier, right? On top of the interfaces, you have hashes. Uh, and this is an optional field, so not all PCAP NG files will carry this, but it may have it, in which case you can use it to your advantage. Uh, it may also carry a drop count. Uh, and you would say the drop count should be a part of interfaces, but the drop counts are also carried per packet, in which case you can actually see how many packets have been dropped since the last packet or since the beginning of the capture, et cetera. There's uh, various possibilities. A packet ID, um, it can keep the same copy of packet for multiple interfaces if you refer to the packet ID. So there may be some optimizations here. Um, and then there is queue on which which queue on which interface you actually caught this packet um, and a verdict whether this packet was supposed to be passed by the filter or dropped by the filter, et cetera, what was supposed to be the verdict on this packet um, in terms of what Linux was or OS was going to do with it. So um, all these capabilities exist in the EPB. Now, if you just quickly compare it to the previous generation, you had timestamp in seconds, you had timestamps in microseconds or nanoseconds. So like I said earlier, there's two fields here which have been converged into a single timestamp in terms of IFTS res resolution. 
there was captured packet length, original packet length, nothing has changed, packet data, variable length packet data was there. So now look back here and you can see so much more here, so much richness in terms of a variety of things that you can capture, optional fields, and the interface um, ID itself was a huge enhancement uh, whereby you can capture and mix multiple interfaces into this uh, pcapng file. So that's it for this video, guys, and thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying this series, uh, do give me a thumbs up, um, subscribe to my channel, or leave me a comment in case you dislike it and you want some changes to be made or you want something more to be added to these videos, do leave me a feedback. I um, I enjoy reading these feedbacks from you guys and also as <laughs> goes without saying that I love the fact that you're subscribing to my channel uh, gives me motivation to keep making more videos. So thanks a lot. Uh, guys for watching uh, this video and I'll see you in another video until then take care and bye bye thanks